Hi guys, it's Kelly Latavola here and I'm back with another video for Spellbinders. And today we are going to be doing some watercoloring. So I'm using the Lighthouse stamp set here. This is one of their 3D shading stamp sets. So when you stamp it down, it pretty much does all of the shading for you in one fell swoop. You're not really going to be able to see it on my watercolor paper. So I did stamp it here so you could kind of see what that looked like. Um, there are some natural breaks in there that are just the white paper. And then I also chose the, um, it's called Light Shine uh, Stamp and Die Set because I wanted the sentiment. Here I'm just kind of showing you, I already stamped it down once and just to kind of get my idea um, for what I wanted to paint. One of the things that's wonderful about these is, first of all, it, when you're starting watercoloring, um, they tell you that landscapes are some of the easiest things that you can do. So this is a great beginner way. And then you already have the stamp that's kind of telling you where the shading is. It's awesome. So I'm working on Canson watercolor paper. I'm stamping in my Mini Misty. I've removed that foam pad. Since this is a cling stamp, I don't need it. And I am stamping in Barely Beige Ink from Simon Says Stamp. This um, ink is very, very light. I will end up stamping this twice just so I can um, get a good impression and be able to see those lines on the textured watercolor paper. Um, you can also do this with Distress ink or any other water-based ink where you use a light color. Typically I use like antique linen um, and then that will kind of melt into your watercolor. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more once we get into the actual painting. But anyway, I stamped it down twice so I would have a, a good impression and um, then got kind of like my setup here. So I have a number two round brush and a number eight round brush. I actually ended up painting the whole thing with the number eight which is pretty impressive because I don't like big brushes. Um, so it just goes to show you how, uh, what a nice point you can get even with the larger brushes. I am painting this with Daniel Smith watercolors. That's what's in my palette over here to the right. Um, on my own channel, I have asked um, how my viewers prefer, prefer to see the watercoloring and almost always they say to zoom in. So that's what I did here. I wet the whole sky area and then I'm kind of dropping in some some pigment here. Um, I'm using uh, Quinn Gold and a little bit of Quinn Rose. I wanted, um, I actually, this was forever ago. I watched a video that was like a beginner watercolor painting and this is kind of how they approach the sky which I really never would have thought to use gold in my sky but I really love the way that it came out. I wish I could remember the person's name. I would give them credit. Um, but around about the time that I started adding in the blue, which I did tone down with a little bit of, I think it's permanent brown, um, I realized that I stamped my lighthouse so high up that I was not going to be able to leave a border on this. Uh, I was going to have to go edge to edge. And that's okay. It's not a big deal. It just means there's a little bit of warping. Um, and I'll just fix that after it's all dry. So once I've put down all the color, I wanted to blot up the edges um, where the water is pooling. And then I'm going to go in with a, um, a dry brush. And you can see I'm kind of pulling out some pigment to make some very general cloud shapes. Um, that's just a trick that you can do to, um, you know, create those clouds or I'm going to do it in the water as well. So here I'm using a mixture of the permanent brown and the um, Quinn Gold to do the sand. This is the first thing that I want to note about the ink that I used. So I put the pigment down and then I went back in with a very lightly damp brush. And you can see on the areas where I stamped how it grabbed that pigment. Uh, it's very easy to see where the stamp um, ends. This can be a good thing or can be a bad thing. So if you're not very comfortable with like the blending of watercolors, then this is a great thing because you're not going to lose any of your lines. If you are very comfortable and you want to do something to kind of make it your own, um, you may want to stamp in an ink that will disappear. So something like a Distress ink um, that's going to be water-based that will blend out completely. This didn't bother me at all, um, but just, just an FYI for you guys. So I mixed some ultramarine blue with um, some, I think it's actually ultramarine turquoise too. And then that's what I did for my water. I added in just a little bit more ultramarine blue just to kind of have some breaks. 
and then you will notice that this is sped up. This is about four times um, the speed in which it actually took me to do it. And the reason that that is, usually I like to start off slow so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing and then I go ahead and speed it up. But I could not do that here because I was trying to make this video into a manageable um, time frame. So I'll explain as I'm going, uh, but I just wanted to explain that to you why I chose to do that. So here um, I'm doing the same thing where I, I went in with a slightly... Um, damp brush and just kind of pulled out some pigment so that there is some lines. The shading is already on this um, lighthouse. I'm just going to go in and kind of deepen it up a little bit. That's what I did with some very, very watered down lunar black. I also mixed some red. Here you can see when I'm, I'm doing the striping on the, the lines, I get a little bit out of the line. So I just immediately blotted that up, went back in with clean water and um, then blotted that up again. It removed all of the red. I didn't have any issues um, with it being in the sky and then I could go back in and straighten out my lines. One of the fun things about this is the ability to kind of make it your own. So obviously the stripes are something that I decided to add. I just googled the pictures of lighthouses and there's so many different um, like horizontal stripes or you know just white with a red top or the red and white diagonal stripe and I just thought that this was a fun way to kind of add my own little touch or my own little character to the scene that we're painting. So I am um, I went in with the lightest color and did the stripes. This particular I don't own red I actually don't own a, a red watercolor in the Daniel Smith. What I did was mix the um, Quinn Rose with the um, what was it, Indian yellow, and I just mixed them um, until I got more of a true red, and that ended up working out for me. In order to add the shaded parts, which are the parts that you see on the left-hand side that I'm dropping in, I used the same combination, so the, the Quinn um, rose and the Indian yellow, but then I added just a little bit of sap green, um, complementary colors, red and green are complementary colors. So if you need to darken up one, um, or I should say tone one or the other to be a little bit darker or a little bit um, desaturated, you can add its complementary color, a very small amount of its complementary color and, and achieve that. So here, and I really wish I would have done this first, but I didn't, so I had to be extremely careful. I added that little bit of shading to the white, but it wasn't enough. And I was kind of scared of the dark colors and I think people often are. Um, so I did have to go back in with like a little bit of lunar black to shade the left-hand side of that lighthouse to match um, the richness or the deepness of the shadows that I achieved in the red. And I was risking it because I'm painting a white area right next to red. So if you can paint your white areas first before you add any other colors, I highly recommend that you do that. I also missed that area in between the top of the lighthouse um, and the bottom with the sky. So I went back in and added that. Here I'm going back in um, with a little bit of lunar black and adding in the window and the door to the lighthouse. And then I'm going to start working on the rest of the landscape. So in the, the back, the hills that are in the back, I decided that I was going to put down like a little bit of a base layer of the same um, sandy, the, the Quinn Gold and, and, and permanent brown that I had been using. And again, this is, the stamp is shaded. You could do this with any medium, by the way. I just thought it would be really pretty in watercolor. Um, but so I went back in, added that color, and then the, because the shading's already there, I know that the right-hand side is meant to be lighter than the left-hand side. So I'm adding my darker colors to the left-hand side of those hills, and then that's automatically going to give me that, that quote-unquote shaded look just by taking my cues from the stamped image. With that said, I did decide, you know, that I wanted to, to do the, the brown and the green. That was kind of my own thing. And I really like how um, it doesn't limit you creatively. Like, even though you have the layout, it's no different than if you were a regular watercolor artist and you went in and did your own sketch and then painted on top of it. You're just using the stamp as your sketch. And then, you know, the rest of it is kind of your own... Um, your own artistic uh, ability and what you want to do, but the stamp makes it so easy with that shading. So there is like a little rock pylon that's out further out. 
you saw that I painted that whole thing all together with the um, Quinn Gold. And that's because I want it to be a little bit softer. I don't want to have the same distinct edges that my rocks up front will because it is further away and it will not have the same amount of detail. For the rocks that are up close right here by the lighthouse, I am painting those one at a time. And this is to help um, make sure that I do have some separation that you can see um, each rock, it doesn't look, um, apparently my new term is going to be blobby. It doesn't look like a big blob. There is some separation. And where the rocks meet each other, um, anytime you're coloring, whether it's Copics, colored pencils, watercolor, whatever you got going on, whatever your medium of choice is, um, anytime two items meet, it's going to be darker where they meet. And so that's where I'm adding my darkest shading. And here I have some very harsh lines with these rocks, but I'm going to go back in with a very damp brush. It's the other thing that I want to talk about is the amount of water you have on your brush, which for this particular style of, of painting that I, I'm doing, I have a very, very minimal amount of water on my brush. I know that it's sped up and sometimes it's hard to see, but you can see my hand going off camera and that is me blotting off my brush because especially with a larger brush like this is a number eight this thing can hold so much water i mean it is a camel of paintbrushes it is just holding water like nobody's business and i if i have that much water on my paper i will not have any control and in order for me to get the result that i want i need to have that control i did struggle a little bit um trying to get a combination of um the darkness that I wanted in the shadows and the blending that I wanted between the colors, which is why you see me continually going back over the same areas. And it's just due to a kind of my own inexperience of knowing um, what is going to work there. So I, I just, you know, I keep going until I get something that I like and, and I would encourage you to do that as well. As long as you're using quality watercolor paper and your paper isn't pilling, you know, you can mess around with it or play with it for as long as you need to. So um, for the actual colors I'm using, I'm using a, I'm using the Quinn Gold, a combination of the Quinn Gold and the Permanent Brown, and then also just straight permanent brown, which is why some areas appear to be a little bit more red. Um, that's because that particular shade of brown that Daniel Smith color is a little bit more red, but that's okay because rocks are not all the same color, right? Um, and there are some smaller uh, rocks that are up like in the top right hand side and the bottom right hand side. Um, for those ones, I really wasn't particular about where I added the shading. As long as there were some dark and light areas, I was happy just letting it be. Um, I think sometimes, and I myself, I'm guilty of this, is we want it to be too specific. We want it to, um, look exactly this way. And sometimes it's better, your mind will fill that in. When your eye looks at it, your mind's going to be like, okay, those little blobs are rocks. They're not going to be like, what are those little blobs on the bottom corner of that cliff? Like you look at it, there's dark and there's light and your, your mind automatically fills in that they are smaller rocks. So I'm just, again, going through and making sure I'm happy with all of the blending that I've got going on, um, adding any darkness where I feel like I need it. Um, up at the top, it got a little less, um, a little less shaded. And so I wanted to make sure that I had some darkness in there. Um, you know, like I said, your mind will fill it in, but you also don't want it to be just one shade. Otherwise there's nothing to fill in. So then the last thing I'm going to do is this little staircase. And so I just did some very thin little lines for the steps and I also added in some quote-unquote brickwork. So I picked up a very little amount of the lunar black and I did a couple of little dots along um, the white stripes. And then I would blot off my brush so that it was just barely damp and then just kind of smooth them out. Um, so it would give the impression of bricks without me actually having to paint each individual brick. I hope that makes sense. I also thought that the shading needed to be a little bit more on like that viewing platform. So I added a little bit of darker shading underneath that with the lunar black. And then the same thing with the staircase. I added a little bit more shading there 
for the fine, fine details. This is all dry now. I'm going back in with a, um, I think it's a French gray, the 70% French gray, um, super sharp tip so I can draw in the lines um, on the lighthouse for the railings and then also up top for the windows. The other um, color that I'm going to use is Espresso. These are Prismacolor pencils. That just what I have is what I happen to own, but you can use whatever you have. Um, and for that, I'm going to go in and just add some detail to the sand. Um, I'm just going to do little stippling dots. That's all I'm going to do, and I'm only going to do it on the sand that is closest to me because the the other sand, the other uh, rock outcropping, is too far away to see that. Here, um, this is something that I frequently do a lot with my summer cards, um, but it just kind of fit here. I'm using just white acrylic paint, um, you know, whatever, the white acrylic paint that you know you buy for your kids to craft with. And I'm using a very stiff bristled brush. And the first time that I'm doing it, I am mixing it with a little bit of water so that it will be um, less opaque. It'll be more transparent. And I'm just going to... Um, kind of stipple in some areas where the water is hitting the beach um, or there's waves out in the water. You don't, you certainly don't have to do this. I just feel like, um, you know, it gives it uh, that kind of like finish look. Um, and I know with, in water, in the world of watercolor, there's gouache, which people will, um, do, you know, use the same thing to put in their white highlights. For the second round, I am using uh, just straight paint, so substantially more opaque. So I'm going to have some light and um, dark areas, and I was super happy with the way that it came out. Um, here, I'm using the little acetate trick. So I stamped my sentiment on my acetate because I really had no idea where I wanted to put it. And putting it on the acetate allows me to move it around my card until I find somewhere that I like without actually having to stamp it down and ruin my card and not be happy with where it's at. So here I'm using Black Simon Says Stamp Ink and I'm going to stamp down the sentiment that says, let your light shine. I just thought it was, I don't know, pretty fitting. Like even though this damp sets are two very different feels, um, the sentiment fitted so well I couldn't not use it. So I did end up stamping that twice. Again, watercolor paper. And then in order to kind of set it apart a little bit, I did a drop shadow, meaning I traced the left hand side and the bottom so that it would have a shadow with my white gel pen just so it would kind of pop off from those rocks and be set apart and then that's it that is the whole card so I toyed around with adding some sequins and I was like you know what I'm gonna let it stand on its own just painted the way it is so thank you guys so much for joining me I hope that you learned something and that you will be intrigued to kind of maybe give this a try um, I will catch you on the next video bye